All right, so I am the sustainability manager for Paraway, and I'm here today as a bit of a case study of basically what the aggregation looks like, but within our business. So, so the model that they're proposing is that everyone acts as an individual herd under this one umbrella project. And that's basically what Paraway does with our current project. So we have 10, 10 of our properties in a project. They all act as individual herds. So I'll just give a bit of an introduction uh, about Paraway, um, how we got into the ERF, and then how it aligns with our business objectives. Um, and then the measuring that we do, and then moving on to the benefits. So Paraway started in 2007 uh, with the purchase of a couple of properties uh, in the Riverina. Uh, it grew pretty quickly. In 2009, we bought our Gulf properties and, and also uh, at Davenport Downs in the Channel Country. Um, and we've uh, grown over the, uh, the 10 years subsequent to uh, having 28 properties and uh, 250 employees and to, be, uh, to have over oh, about one and a half billion dollars in assets under our management. Uh, so this is where we're located. Um, the bulk of the, uh, the our ERF project is in the north. We have five properties in the north um, that are in the project, uh, which are the, the two in the Gulf, the our Cl Cloner at Cloncurry and Davenport Downs. Uh, we also have five properties in New South Wales that are in the project as well. Uh, some breeding properties in, the, in western New South Wales and, uh, and one over in uh, eastern New South Wales. We do have other um, beef herds that aren't in the project and the reason that they're not in the project is because we didn't own them at the time that we registered them and we didn't have that baseline data. So what, why we're here today is because we decided to dip our toe in the water and give it a go. Nobody had done it before us. Um, we were the first in Australia, possibly the world, to use, to generate carbon credits or to register a project to generate carbon credits from our managing our beef herd. Um, we were uh, successfully contracted in 2016. Uh, once we were able to get that three year baseline together um, and, and, and the project has about uh, 110,000 head of cattle in those 10 herds. So the reason we got involved is because it really aligns well with our, um, our goals to, to grow in productivity and to do that sustainably through sustainable land management, um, maximising profit and reducing environmental impact. Um, going back to what Michael was saying, the real estate business and the production side of things, you know, we, we're considering both of those as we all are. We don't have a brand, uh, a brand to sell. We don't have a retail product, so we're in very much the same situation as you guys probably are. Um, but what we do have is we have investors that are investing into our into the fund. So for us, we got one of the real positives of getting into the project was that it was going to demonstrate to potential investors that we were doing the right thing, that we were generating money and profit for them, but we were doing it in a very sustainable way. And the reason that we got it over the line was because of our partnership with Natural Carbon. Um, you know, even for us being a big organisation, going it alone was just something that we just <coughs> couldn't do. And even being through it once, um, we, wouldn't, we would go with Natural Carbon again. We, it's just too hard to do on your own. So in a nutshell, the project is get your baseline, get our three year baseline uh, period, implement some new management actions to become more productive, which increases your ADGs and, and your uh, kilograms per AE, and generate carbon credits. Getting into this and, and the potential for us to generate these carbon credits was a catalyst for us to look at our operations and say, how can we do things better? How can we become more productive? You know, we thought 
like just about everyone that we were at the peak of productivity that we, you know, we were doing really well, but we had to go, you know, making those little 1% changes, um, fast tracking some of our development programs. Uh, initially, we did some subdivisions and additional watering points, um, something that we could sort of tick a box and say, this is a new activity that we're doing to become, to improve the uh, productivity of our herd. Um, scale is obviously an advantage for us. Um, you know, we can make small uh, changes to our herd and because of sheer numbers, we can, it, it, it transfers to a, a lot of kilos. Also having that scale means that the, um, the overheads are spread a, a lot thinner and that's the whole basis of the aggregation model. So as a result of that, we've witnessed an increase in our overall herd efficiency um, through the, the kilos per AE. And uh, our age of turnoff has, um, has been reduced as well. So the structure of the project, um, I think this is sort of, we've sort of gone through this, but this just shows the complexity of, of how, uh, of the whole process of getting it going and, and the cost to us because we have partnered with Natural Carbon. Um, so there's feasibilities, registrations, audits, and then corporate carbon comes in and, and they handle all of the, the contracts with the government. None of that has any cost to us. Um, we did some weighing of our, of our stock, a bit of additional weighing of our stock, which had a marginal cost in labor. Uh, the annual reporting gets done every year and doesn't cost us anything and the we pay uh, a payment to natural carbon to cover the, the co all of those costs, uh, which is a percentage of the, uh, of the uh, number of carbon credits that we generate. And then the risk manager gets a proportion as well. So basically measuring for the project uh, involves converting your AEs to kilograms of beef, uh, which, which uh, we do as part of our benchmarking anyway. We have to document the new activities that we do to, to demonstrate that we are implementing new activities to make a herd more productive, which takes about a week uh, for me to do. Now that is a week to do for 10 herds. So it's not a, a ridiculous amount of work that's involved. Getting it started and getting that three years of data takes a bit longer. So the results that we've got in 2016-17, which was our first reporting period, we abated 22,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent. 2017 and 18, we increased that to 39,000 tonnes. And just last week we had, we were credited 66,000 tonnes for the third reporting period. This is an example of the data that we provide to Natural Carbon which is very similar to what Michael was showing you before in, in terms of his benchmarking. So just getting your classes and your numbers, you know, there are, and then kilograms in each, uh, per head in each class, gives you your opening balance, purchases, births, deaths, transfers in, sales, and then uh, gives it, then you get your closing balance, and then that's, uh, then a kilogram is produced at the end. So the key points are that who doesn't want to become more productive? You know, it's aligned with our management objectives, but you do have to implement new management actions or you have to be doing something that can reasonably be perceived as going to improve the productivity of your herd. And it can be capital intensive, but it can also be a management action that costs nothing. Uh, no external fees uh, and working with a risk manager um, just makes it easy for us. Um, you do need to have historical data and there is some additional weighing of livestock required. Um, but, you know, we're happy to do that anyway. It, it ties in well with how we're managing our herds. Benefits. Yeah, so, so in that second year where we earned 39,000 credits uh, after expenses that yielded us $284,000.
Uh, yeah, 2019 uh, reporting period finished, 66,000 credits there. Um, we haven't done the transfer yet, so we haven't got that money in our account. Um, and we're, we're, we're so happy with it that we are currently registering a second project with our newly or well, recently acquired Rocklands and Tambar stations, which is about a 50,000 herd, head herd. Um, and that's going to be the, uh, the basis of any potential aggregation that we have. So straight away, the aggregation model um, that, that's being proposed today has reached that critical mass. So it will be going, going on regardless. So the learnings are um, that you need baseline measurements, you need to have data, um, you need to be able to demonstrate your herd performance and, and the improvements of the herd performance. Um, your business is measuring your business in kilos um, rather than dollars uh, is, is how the, the, the project works uh, and how the credits are generated. And it, there is a bit of a time, um, you do require a bit of time to, to get the data together. And it allows you to, to think about your business as well from a production point of view with this little bit that's gonna come on the side and, and potentially give you a little bit of extra income. So it, it's it's win-win in that you win on production and you win on carbon credits. Uh, for us, it's great for our social license as well. Um, I think it's possibly less important for an individual producer, um, but it's becoming more important for the industry as a whole. Um, and you do have the ability to stack projects too. So we. We're looking at the potential of, of, uh, of registering some soil carbon projects. Um, we'd love to get into Savannah burning if we ever um, had a property that was uh, eligible for that, but uh, unfortunately we don't at the moment. And so the key messages are measuring, measuring your, your business, gives you opportunities in this carbon space, which is just starting, um, the sustainability uh, peace, you know, gives you options to, to go into voluntary markets and you can make money from it.